right, folks, behold the TF MSX. This is a terrible fire, sort of latest uh, venture and uh, and board that he's made. What this is, is an MSX 2 or 2 plus if you want it to be clone. And and it's, uh, he's been working on this for a while and he sent me a uh, revision one here uh, just to test. Uh, he's worked on it uh, in parallel with uh, Arik who's done uh, USB drivers. I'll go over what's on here. There is some FPGA stuff, but it's essentially a clone. Uh, so we have uh, a real uh, Z80, uh, one of the um, sound chip, the uh, YM38910, uh, ex or except here it's the uh, the uh, another equivalent pin compatible F. The Yamaha 2149F, um, essentially a pin compatible. It's just it works exactly the same way. It's just um, in, in Steven's fashion, uh, essentially he's going for you know cost effective, cheaper version, affordable that people can do, and this was. Um, significantly cheaper and more readily available than uh, 3, uh, 8, 9, 10. Uh, you can certainly replace it if you have one. Uh, we've got a real VDP. In this case, it's an MSX2 VDP. It's upside down, but it's the uh, V9938. You can technically replace it with a V9958, making it an MSX2+. Plus. Uh, there's, however, a little issue left. So this is rev uh, revision one, so there's some ironing to do yet. Um, essentially, there's uh, an issue with the... Uh, with the uh, C-Sync, uh, and I wasn't able to get it to work, but I think my uh, VDP is dodgy. Uh, I tested this on another MSX, and it just wasn't working right. But uh, um, Stephen thinks it just needs some capacitance on the uh, C-Sync line, uh, which has been confirmed by Arik. So uh, that's coming. There is uh, two cartridge ports. Um, uh, as per uh, the MSX specifications, we got joysticks here and here. Uh, it's only one populated in the one he sent me. And there's an issue or a little error. Uh, essentially, uh, it's upside down. <laughs> so that's why it's soldered at the back. So that'll be fixed as well. Uh, there's an RGB out, um, which is actually from, again, because it was cheaper and to keep it standard. Because the, the, the funny thing about MSX is, even though they were standard, Stuff like connectors, RGB, wasn't standard across all the MSX. So uh, the pinout was different. So sometimes you buy, you, you get an MSX, you buy an RGB cable and it doesn't work. And it's because there was no um, standard specification for RGB as far as I know. If there was, manufacturer didn't take it into account and they only did their own thing. So this RGB cable is uh, the Amstrad pinout. So an Amstrad RGB cable will do. And it's readily available there's plenty of stock and it's it's quite considerably cheaper as well um power in it's five volt center negative i didn't have one so i just soldered stuff directly on the board here and that's it so we got some video ram okay. and all the glue logic here is handled by the um the the, the cpld here i assume some ram for it here we got an eprom or a prom sorry uh, or EEPROM um, to handle uh, everything. It's actually much bigger than what's needed, um, which will be handy for <laughs> something else. And uh, here we got some stuff to handle the um, the USB uh, drive, so you can connect a keyboard and I believe a controller. We'll try that afterwards. I tried the keyboard, I haven't tried the controller. Not that it matters, we got a controller right here. Um, and Arik is the one who, uh, who, who did the driver for this. So uh, fair play because that's actually really, really welcome addition. Having a USB keyboard um, as opposed to having just a custom keyboard, which is, you know, it would just increase the price drastically for, for this thing. And that's not the point. So I think we just need to power this on at this stage. Uh, so there's a couple of uh, I mentioned issues with the VDP. So it's only MSX2 at the moment. It needs a reset button as well. And as of now, it's only in 50 hertz. Uh, but Steven is working on having the option to switch between uh, 60 and uh, 50 hertz uh, as you need, which is handy because, you know, uh, some European games on on floppies and tapes, um, if you can, you can actually get a, 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 a card here that will output to a, a disk drive or a GoTech. And a lot of those European titles were designed for 50 hertz, but the cards were mostly Japanese designed for 60 hertz. So it's handy to have both, um, uh, uh, I suppose. Um, let's try this thing. Let's, let's plug it all in.
All right, so I got uh, RGB, I got a, a controller here. It was a handy little uh, power pad from uh, Panasonic. And I've got a USB, a uh, wireless USB keyboard uh, connected and our power, so. <laughs> there you go, that's handy. Uh, 128 uh, uh, Ks of RAM and uh, video RAM. And uh, straight into basic. So a couple of things I just want to test is the shift key would actually just shift the commands properly. Uh, there's one thing that I don't think has been, and I'm just thinking of it now, is the control stop, um, the control stop combination. So if you look at the the uh, uh, keyboard of an MSX here, you got the stop button. So whenever you're in basic, if you press control stop. Um, you can actually stop the execution of a basic program, which is very handy if you get into a loop. Um, it just, uh, instead of having to lose everything and power or reset your computer, you can press control stop and that stops the program. And here, I can't seem to find the combination. So the F1, F2, F5, yeah, they all work. Uh, Interesting. So I, uh, I, the first thing I did was uh, set this thing into a loop, and I'm not sure where the control stop uh, option is. I know where control is. I don't know what the stop uh, key is assigned to. And trying everything: backspace, Windows. So while I'm editing, I, I was talking to Stephen, and two things. So the issue with the stop uh, key on the keyboard, uh, he's aware of. Uh, that's something he needs to iron out. So let's just try some cards. And because this is an MSX2, there's no point. There's no point just trying anything else. We're going to try Vampire Killer. Uh, this is the uh, EU version, the, uh, the uh, Japanese version. They all work on any machine the uh, the actual difference will be the title will be in uh, japanese here and in english here and the code is in both cards it's actually the same card just different layout and the card will actually recognize what the uh, system is running as and uh, and load the appropriate graphic so let's just uh, demonstrate That Konami logo. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So, yeah, it's the Japanese card, but it shows here in English. Um, because we got our English ROM. There you go. So, the cards are working. That's great to know. Uh, I want to try. I'm not going to really play. Um, or will I? Yeah. Controller is working fine. Um, this is fantastic. And can I use the keyboard to play? Yes, I can. Fantastic stuff. All right, uh, I'm not going to play um, this. I just want to test this guy. Uh, next thing I'm going to try, what about the multi cart? Will a multi cart here uh, work? There's no reason why it wouldn't. There you go. I had to do a bit of fiddling because the uh, edge connector was uh, uh, kind of dirty here. But um, this is a handy little uh, thing here. We got a, a ton of Konami games, pretty much all the Konami games. Uh, but I think what I want to try, we got the Game Master on here as well, um, is Space Manbo. Does it run? And well, there's no reason why it wouldn't run. So let's try that. <laughs> yes. Yes, it does. There you go. So we can see the MSX2 Plus or the VDP is an MSX2 and not MSX2 Plus because of the uh, the clipping on the uh, the scrolling here, here and here. So uh, with a, an MSX2 Plus VDP, but I, I, I can't get it to work yet. 
this would be a smooth scrolling. We can also see it runs in 50 hertz and not 60 hertz and uh, that's coming uh, as I said. Because of the two parts we can actually a use a combination of uh, just different cards. So if I um, if I play M uh, Nemesis 2 which is Gradius for the uh, or Gradius 2 for the uh, MSX uh, and I use it in combination with Penguin Adventure it does something interesting so let's just do that. So this is part one and part two. So Konami, Konami was clever in order to increase the collectability of uh, some of their cards they would actually in, if you use two cards uh, sometimes they would bring up a a little cheat um, that was defined by which card you use in com combination with which so if you use a uh, penguin adventure in slot two and uh, nemesis on slot one Suddenly your ship is a penguin, because it's a penguin adventure. And I think, yeah, the bonuses are a fish. Uh, so it's little stuff like that. Uh, some card combination actually offer you a continue uh, or just extra power or um, I think Qbert on Nemesis 2 allows you to uh, enter a cheat code to entirely boost your, your ship. So things like that. So it's really cool to see that it works. Uh, I want to try one last thing. Konami uh, released at some point the uh, Game Master and the Game Master 2. I only have Game Master 1 and this is essentially a cheat cart. There's no game on this. It just introduces a cheating system <laughs> for this. So uh, I know that it works with Vampire Killer. Vampire Killer in this slot, in slot 1 and... So when you press start, it actually brings up a menu uh, that allows you to uh, modify your stage number, your starting stage. So here you use the keyboard, we'll just select, I don't know, stage four, um, enter, and then uh, player number, uh, we'll just have, I don't know, 10, and start going. And right away we start, well, nine, this is our 10th player at stage four, which is second world in Castlevania. This is a bit too loud now. Anyway, it's great to see uh, the two parts work. And uh, um, there's one last thing I want to try is see if I can use a uh, USB controller on this. Uh, the issue with the, or it's not an issue actually, with the USB, uh, the controller, um, um, using a controller to the USB port, that's not part of the uh, the work that Eric did. So that's not something that's uh, currently possible. So it's keyboard only, uh, which is fine, it's absolutely fine. Um, and the uh, controller is handled either by the keyboard or by the, uh, the control port, funny enough. So there you go, folks. This is the uh, TF uh, MSX, this is Revision 1 uh, prototype, Terrible Fire Eric, thank you very much guys for uh, for working on this and for sending me uh, for sending me this uh, this first revision. Um, so I suppose the next question and uh, people are going to ask me here, well where where is this available, where can we get it and when? And I don't really have an answer to that yet. I know Stephen has plans to distribute it and uh, the idea is to have people build it themselves or get a handful of people to build it you know per order uh, so uh, like he does with his uh, terrible fire cards uh, when that happens i will let you know and uh, we'll do another maybe little video and i will point you in the right direction so uh, stay tuned on that anyway folks thank you for watching i hope this was interesting i will i will let you know when this is available and where to get it um all that kind of stuff so uh, thank you and i'll see you next time